Ladies and gentlemen, the Secretary of the Army. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining me today at the Army Mountain Warfare School here in Jericho, Vermont. It's, uh, it's a great day for me to be here. Um, uh, this is another stop on uh, the tour I've been making throughout the Army in my last 17 or 18 months on the job, if you will. Uh, I'd like to begin by speaking about the Army's priorities, and they remain the readiness of the force, the modernization of the force, and reform. And when I think about readiness and modernization, I think of places just like this, the Army Mountain Warfare School, which is the premier mountain warfare school for the United States Army. And as we look ahead to, to uh, uh, the strategic competitors of, on our horizon, defined by the national defense strategy as Russia and China, is, is having the capabilities such as uh, that are taught here at the Mountain Warfare School that will make sure that we're prepared to fight and win anytime, any place, and uh, at any moment if called upon to do so. So it was a pleasure today uh, spending time uh, with the cadre. Uh, understanding all the special skills and leadership and expertise they bring to the to job, uh, understanding the program of instruction and how varied it is, and then of course having the chance to meet and talk with students who come here from across the country and from Canada as well. I had a chance to speak to a young student. So very pleased with my visit. Yesterday I had a chance to also meet with the uh, Vermont National Guard to speak with the TAG and uh, several of the uh, officers in the units. And again, this is just another stop as I go around the Army and, and check in on soldiers and find out all that we're doing well. So with that, we'll, I'll stop and we'll open up for questions. And we'll start over here on the left, Jennifer. Yeah, so what are, what are some of the exact skills that we are teaching here in Vermont that you say are very important? You know, it's everything from the basics, from how to how to dress in a cold water, a cold weather environment, and how to live, to uh, technical ice, how to climb steep snow. Uh, it involves how to conduct a medical evacuation if you're on the side of a mountain. So, all very important schools to mountain warfare, the uh, skills to mountain warfare, and there are others as well. How do you how do you engage an enemy? How do you do mountain warfare planning? Uh, and when you look around the world, there are several places where obviously there, there's mountainous terrain. So we need to be prepared uh, to uh, uh, expand those skills. We need to have a certain level of skills throughout our force and uh, bring it together right here. It just it was a chance to see all that take place. Does that help with recruiting? And what are some of the biggest recruiting incentives that you guys are doing right now? Well, I think if you if you look right here in Vermont, having a, this world-class facility right here, I think would, would help recruit from this region. And if you talk to many of the soldiers, they are from Vermont, they uh, or they're from across the border, New York or New Hampshire or somewhere. So I, I think having that world-class capability certainly says a lot. Uh, and on the recruiting front, uh, we, we seem to be on track right now for our, meeting our recruiting goals for this year. Uh, it comes after a complete overhaul, if, if you will, of our recruiting enterprise. So I feel very good with where we are. But things like this, schools like this, I think attract, um, uh, uh, attract folks to come into the service. They help us retain very good soldiers. And they speak to the demands of the Army and, and what we need to be prepared for for future conflict. Courtney? Yes, so you had talked about making it a priority to modernize the force. Right. Can you give a few examples of things you're doing to do so? Well, we've outlined uh, in our vision six modernization priorities. They begin with long-range precision fires. They include future vertical lift, a next-generation combat vehicle, all the way down through what we call number six, soldier lethality. So that's making sure the soldier's well prepared to uh, fight, win, and survive in, 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 uh, on the demands of the modern battlefield. So yesterday, when I was in Massachusetts, I had a chance to uh, visit Natick Laboratories, where they're doing everything from soldier performance, uh, nutrition, the, the meals we eat, to uh, how we better train our soldiers how we make sure that they are uh, more physically fit. And they were actually doing work involving mountain warfare. And then for, for me to be able to come here today to, uh, to witness the training sapping on uh, here in Vermont was just spectacular. So those are modernization priorities. We're shifting a lot of money, over $30 billion uh, over a five-year period to, to modernize the Army, to take us from the legacy of the past to the future, to make sure we're prepared to, again, deal with the threats of the, of the 21st century. Okay, my second question is a little changing topics. Um, sure. Sexual harassment's been a problem in the force, and we've had some instances here in Vermont. Can you talk about you know what you guys are doing to combat that? Sure. No, sexual harassment and assault is a problem nationally, and it's uh, just uh, I, I've, there's no room for it in the army. It's intolerable. And uh, we have a number of programs uh, ongoing, have been for years, to drive it down. We've seen over the past 10 years our rates of 
of incidents uh, steadily go down and we've seen our rates of reporting go steadily up and that's believe it or not a good thing that more and more victims of sexual harassment mostly women feel comfortable enough with the chain of command they're confident the chain of command will act on their behalf to report that we want to see more of it so um, uh, we're not where we need to be uh, where we need to be is zero and we will continue to work on that engage and uh, it's just something that uh, it's critical not just to the, the values we hold as, as, as Army, but it's important to readiness. Uh, we've got to treat everybody with dignity and respect because I need everybody in the force fully capable, fully confident, fully ready as a, as a key partner on the Army team. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so the new uh, Adjutant General Knight, uh, what are some of the challenges that he is going to have to overcome as he starts in this new position? And what are you doing to help him in that role? Well, we talked briefly yesterday. I think you'd have to really ask him what his particular challenges are. The only thing that comes to mind in my conversation with him was recruiting. That's always a challenge. Uh, making sure you have uh, qualified folks who are interested in, uh, in, in joining and serving the, uh, the Army, whether it's regular Army Guard or Reserve. And... Um, so we talked about that for a while and, and uh, the challenges he faces and you know the we, we all work together on this enterprise and uh, he's working in as well but we need to improve our websites we need to do more social more outreach through social media all those things and I think he's focused on the problem sure go ahead um, and so what was it like today being with Vermont soldiers on the ground seeing what they uh, go through no it was fantastic and uh, you're right, Vermont soldiers on one hand, mostly cadre, but it's just uh, it was fantastic to see that we had soldiers from many, many states out there. So I've talked to soldiers from Florida and North Carolina and Georgia and uh, Colorado and Montana and Idaho. And, uh, and again, a, uh, 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 from a, the police department up in Canada. So it's a wide range of soldiers out here, very enthused about the course, uh, very excited about what they were learning. I uh, couldn't have anything better to say about the cadre and the professionalism. So I think it speaks extremely well for um, the, obviously the Army Mountain Warfare School, but uh, Vermont and uh, all the great work that you all are doing up here. So I just I, I walk away from today, you know, with a, a great sense of pride and all the all, all the stuff that's going on up here. And look, I've known about the Mountain Warfare School for decades, and it always had a great great reputation. And for me to finally come here and see it in the action in the action just kind of affirmed that for me. Okay. I saw that you did the climbing wall, but I saw. Yeah, no, I, I, I you know, I've, I've climbed in the past, and and that's why I'm well aware of what they do here. So it was a chance to, to, to do a little bit of climbing with the students and uh, talk about what techniques are happening these days and skills. So it was fun to get out there and and do that with them. Mr. Secretary, thank you for your time, sir. Okay, good. Thank you all very much for what you do. We'll see you.